Hello and welcome to this edition of Smart Money with me Vivek Law and Monica Hallen. Together on the show, we will help you manage your money smartly. We'll analyze the news, decode financial products and take all your questions. So let's have a quick look at what we have on the show for you. How to choose the right mutual fund scheme? We tell you. What is a DMAT account and what role does it play in your personal finance? And as always, we address your financial queries. When you go shopping for a mutual fund scheme, the plethora of choices can end up confusing you. In such a situation, you need a comprehensive guide to make that informed decision. And here's where Mint 50 can come handy. Today we tell you what Mint 50 is and how to use it. Kaizad has the story. Mint has prepared a list of 50 schemes that are investment worthy. The list helps to narrow down your choice to a more manageable one. A good portfolio need not go beyond 6 to 8 schemes. First decide what your debt and equity allocation is going to be. Split that money across a core and a satellite approach. The core schemes are your rock solid long term performers that come with a good track record. In these, you would expect to stay invested for a long time. Depending on your risk profile, this should take about 60 to 70 percent of your portfolio allocation. The satellite portion can be used to add the returns kicker or a flavor to your portfolio like a thematic fund, infrastructure funds or those funds that show a promising track record but are relatively new. If you're starting to invest afresh, start by putting money in schemes that invest significantly in large cap scripts and then later diversify into mid cap funds. If you find that your fund has underperformed consistently, redeem and then choose out of mint 50. A red flag scheme or category indicates a high risk, high return option. An orange flag indicates a slump in performance, but the fund strategy may be punished by the markets. Of the 42 schemes that remain, 35 outperform the category averages. Of the 29 schemes that we ascertained benchmark indices to, 28 schemes outperformed them. It's always that big question, isn't it, Monica, that even once you decide, and many people are today deciding, that they should be investing in mutual funds as well, but then that's where the hitch comes. Mm -hmm. Which one do I finally choose? You've been doing this exercise for a while now on Mint Money. Can you take us through what is the best way to look at this from a person's point? Right, and that's precisely why we thought of something called Mint 50, and this was four years ago, 2010. We thought about, you know, what... Even as individuals we face, there are more than 1,000, 1,500 schemes out there. And even with knowing finance, even with knowing how markets work, when as an individual I go to buy a scheme, I am just like flummoxed. I don't know what to do. And how do you finally shortlist funds out of you know, thousands of schemes which are out there? So this was the kind of the motivation which went into curating out 50 schemes out of this whole universe of schemes which we think our uh, analysis, our analysts think are investment worthy. There's a methodology which you, is used to shortlist these schemes, which also takes into account not just the return, because that's a risky parameter, mm. but risk-adjusted return. You know, how well does the scheme do when markets are not so good? So wh on what and, and how consistent is this risk-adjusted return over periods of time? So you can choose last year's winner, you can choose the top scheme last year, but there's no guarantee that it'll do as well next year. So these are the qu uh, quantitative sort of methods which go into shortlisting. And then there's this whole qualitative uh, analysis that we do because the analysts track the fund houses, the fund managers. They also are aware of some of the sort of things which go on inside the fund manager's head. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the uh, Kaiser, who's the uh, you know mutual fund editor for Mint, has told us that one of the red flags for him is when the fund manager begins to blame the market. You know that's your first signal that there's something wrong with the fund house. You know those are the sort of signals that we pick up on to say that okay, whereas a fund manager can have a bad year, but if the blame is coming only on the market, there's surely something else wrong. Yeah. So those are the sort of qualitative things that we pick up on. And we are fairly proud to say that uh, you know we did our own internal audit, and you have to benchmark yourself against what you have uh, suggested before. So you, we must understand that every fund will not have a benchmark. Mm. There will be funds with a benchmark. There will be funds like uh, you know which do not uh, like a fund of funds will typically would not have a benchmark. So we had 29 funds which 
did declare a benchmark. 28 of the Mint 50 funds had done better than that, right? And then the other uh, parameter that we look at is a category average performance. And we had 42 of those. 35 of the Mint 50 funds beat the category averages. So there's a whole effort to go on benchmarking what we do as well. And we do a, like a twice a year audit of the portfolio. We don't want to churn very much. But uh, every half a year, we do this analysis. And in the analysis carried out in January 2014, we have replaced four funds, and we have brought in four new funds. So my advice to people who do follow Mint 50 is to go on Google, search Mint 50, look at the list, look at your portfolio. And if you see that you have funds which are not part of that, or uh, uh, which you feel you would prefer to have these curated funds, it's not a bad idea to redeem and get into these funds. So that's the sort of background to why Mint 50 was created and how we do it. And has the experience over four years been <clears throat> that pretty much from uh, one study to the next study, the change is roughly four in, four out, or is it sometimes more than that? Approximately two, The reason three, I'm asking four, you this is because yeah. uh, we do tell people that every six months to a year is perhaps yes. when you should relook right. at how your scheme That's is doing. Right. Yes. But it's not as if there is no. a very huge change no. in a good performing scheme. No. So also what we like to do is that we believe that fund managers can have a bad year. Hmm. Right? But if you have had consistent performance over 10 years and you've mistimed the market, see fund managers are all about timing the market. We, hmm. we tell people do not time, but it is the fund manager's job to time the market. Right. Right? So if there could be a year that he's mistimed the market, hmm. we don't want to churn the portfolio so that say, okay, now this guy will not work. So we give that time. But if we see performance tapering off, and it isn't as if performance will fall like a rock. It will fall gradually. So if we feel that, look, we gave him a year, but he's not been able to recover, or that's a recurrent problem with this sort of fund manager or fund group, then we will say, then we will say okay, this needs to go out. Or if we see a hungry new fund house, and we have some of them mm. on mid-50 this year, mm. you know, they are hungry, they're small, they're showing consistent performance. And if we find a fund house which is tiring out, we will then, of course, go ahead and replace. So that's how it works. All right. It's time now for a quick break here on Smart Money. On the other side, we tell you what is a DMAT account and what role does it have in your investments. Keep watching Smart Money. Mm.